Hi, I'm Bradley Barth, senior reporter at SC Media here at RSA in San Francisco. I'm here today with Michael Sutton, the chief information security officer at cloud security company Zscaler. Uh, Michael, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about uh, what you're here at the show for, uh, what are you interested in, uh, what's going to be your key message here at the show? Sure. I, I'm always interested in looking at, hey, kind of where are we at in terms of our technical evolution and how our company is addressing that. I think we're past the point of, will it be cloud? Companies have already accepted that. But that's, uh, I don't think that enterprises were particularly well prepared for it. Uh, I think now there's this rush to move everything into the cloud and we're not going back on that. But networking teams were ill-prepared. Um, you know, they, it's crushing their network because they have all this new internet traffic. Security teams are, are scrambling because now they have to secure data in locations that they don't own and control. So I'm looking for what vendors are doing to address that. And you know, it's great for Zscaler because that's the world that we started in when we started the company nine years ago. Uh, in the uh, lead up to the 2016 presidential elections, there was a lot of concern around some of the hacking activity, including the hack of the uh, Democratic National Committee. Uh, the concern now is, as we uh, move forward, uh, that cyber espionage, uh, you were telling me before, uh, could evolve to where not only is there a concern that outside actors could access information that they shouldn't, but that they could actually modify, alter information that they shouldn't. And the next step of cyber espionage could be uh, damaging data integrity. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, data breaches have become the norm, whether we look at commercial breaches or the political breaches that we've dealt with recently. Um, honestly, not particularly sophisticated attacks. It's been getting somebody's password and getting the data. Um, but so far, it's been releasing that data, or in commercial instances, sometimes it's using that for uh, a profit motive. But if we if we look at the the DNC hack, the Podesta hack, I mean, really, it was it was to influence people, it was to embarrass. So the data was dumped online. We don't have any reason to believe that it was necessarily altered. But that's the next step that concerns me, uh, because that's a particularly challenging situation in that. When there's a when it's dumped online, um, you know we know what it is, and we don't have any reason to believe that any of the data was altered in those cases with the DNC and Podesta. But what if it had been? Um, you know the victim is already in a precarious situation that you know they've had their dirty laundry thrown online. Um, they don't want to be validating, yes, it's real, it's not, although in this case, you know, we were quite confident that it was real. But what happens when some of that data has been altered? Uh, the victim's not in a very believable position to say, hey, yes, 99% of this is just straight emails, but this particular one that we're really concerned about, um, we didn't actually say that. It was altered. That's going to be a very tricky challenge, uh, and I, I expect that we're going to start to see some of that. And as a result of some of the mounting concerns around malicious cyber activity, um, there have been some that have suggested, and even in the current administration, some have suggested, well, maybe there are things that we can do to, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, shut off portions of the internet. You've uh, seen certain nation states like China who have created uh, firewalls or walled gardens um, for those kind of purposes. Is that something that you could uh, anticipate seeing uh, more of uh, more uh, nations perhaps creating their own uh, private individual uh, internets uh, rather than the internet really being more of a, uh, a global entity? Yeah, we, we think of the internet as this uh, free flow of information. Unfortunately, the internet is getting less free, not more free. I mean, virtually all countries intercept and, and inspect traffic for some purpose. The big difference is that democratic nations typically do that uh, in the name of national security, you know, looking for terrorist activities, things like that. Whereas non-democratic nations, while they still do that, they tend to also uh, be doing censorship of the information. Look at the Great Firewall of China. I mean, it's a lot of that activity is done to make sure that citizens can't get to certain types of information, be it Google, Facebook, etc. We're seeing more and more of that. Uh, I mean, there are a number of uh, great not-for-profit entities that will kind of track what's going on in various countries. And, and almost universally, the grades get worse and worse year after year. Um, and then, yes, we start to hear statements. I, 
Will I expect to see that from some of the non-democratic nations? I'm more concerned about some of the statements that I hear from some of the democratic nations that they want to start doing some form of censorship. And it's always uh, guised in the form of we're doing this to protect people so they can't get to uh, bad information. Uh, but you worry about it being abused. And when I hear statements um, like what we'd heard uh, primarily during the campaign from then President-elect Trump, where he had stated things like, we should have the ability to shut off portions of the internet. Those are concerning statements. Now, I think they're somewhat naive statements in that I think that just shows a lack of understanding of how the technology itself works, because it really wouldn't be possible for the United States to simply shut off portions of, of the global internet. But it, it is concerning to hear things like that, as it suggests that, that there is a desire to be restricting access. Great. Thank you, Michael. Uh, again, that's uh, Michael Sutton, uh, the Chief Information Security Officer at Zscaler. I'm Bradley Barth from RSA. Until next time, have a safe day online.